All right, so this is section 5.5. This is called average value of a function. If you listen to the name really carefully, it actually tells you exactly what we're going to do. First of all, it is the average value. Average of something is when you take a whole bunch of things, add it up, divide by how many there are. Value of a function is simply a y value of a function um, in this case. So we are literally taking a whole bunch of y values, adding them up, and then dividing by how many y values we have. That's going to tell us the average value of a function. It is also known as the mean value theorem of integrals. So we've had a mean value theorem before, which was for derivatives. This one is of integrals. So it says that f is if f is continuous, is a continuous function on the closed interval from a to b, then there exists a number c, which is just some x value, on the closed interval such that the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals b minus a times f of c. Now let's think about what those two pieces of are. b minus a is really just a difference in your endpoints, and f of c, well, f of c is really some kind of a y value, so it's a height at a specific um, x value c. So it's going to give you a y value at a specific value c. So let's think about what that actually says. <clears throat> it says that if I have some kind of a function, whatever this function looks like, from A to B. And A and B, let's actually make it so A and B do not finish at the same Y level. So there's your A and B. What this says is we could find the integral from A to B. Okay, that's the left-hand side of the equation. So that is, let's do that in green. No, let's do it in orange. Here is the integral from A to B, all of this. What that says is some distance between B and A, well, that's just this distance right here, times some value F of C. Well, we'd have to know where C is, but we will have a way to at least be able to try and find it. Maybe C is right here. I don't know. I'm just making this up because I don't know where it is in this case. But if I go up to here, then f of c right here times b minus a, well, isn't that just a rectangle? That height times that distance. So what this is really saying is the integral on the left is exactly the same as the area of this rectangle. Or, in other words, you only need one rectangle to find the area using this um, mean value theorem of integrals or the average value. <clears throat> That's because, in our case, once again, the height is f of c and the width of the rectangle is b minus a. Okay, so it might be a little bit confusing in the fact that, well, wait a minute, Everything we've been doing before this used infinite number of rectangles, and that's what finding the integral is. We are using an infinite number of rectangles, taking the limit of those areas, and that gives us the area beneath the curve or between the curve and the x-axis. This is telling us now I only really have to have one rectangle as long as I know where to find that specific height on the graph. That height of that rectangle will be exactly the same as the area between the curve and the x-axis. Kind of a cool concept, actually. Now, how do we actually put this into use? Like, how does this deal with the whole average thing that I was talking about? So f of c is called the average value of f on the interval from a to b. And let's think about what that means. f of c is a y value. Basically, that says that if I could go back to this if I could go back to this graph and I could add up every single y value along this curve, so every single y value along this curve, if I could add up all those y values, 
and we actually know how to do that now. It's called integration. And then divide by how many y values there are. That particular y value right there would be the average of them. So whatever that y value is, you know, I could add them all up and that could be 7 for all I know. I don't know what the y value is. But that would be the average of them. So f of c is called the average. <clears throat> and in our case, the location of that average would be at x equals c, so wherever that is. And we'll be able to try and figure that out. So it's the average height of the rectangle that approximates the area. So let's put it into a slightly more useful form. Okay, I told you on the previous page, this first line, that the um, integral from a to b of f of x dx is f of c times b minus a. All I did in the second line here was I switched the sides, put the f of c times b minus a on the left. Now, what if I was going to solve for f of c? Well, that means I would divide by b minus a. Instead of writing the whole integral on top of b minus a, it's a little cumbersome to do that. I'm just going to write 1 over b minus a out front times my integral from a to b, f of x dx. It's not wrong if you put the entire integral over top of b minus a, but if you do that, make sure you write the entire integral on top of b minus a. Don't just put b minus a underneath of f of x, because that would be wrong. It's got to be under the entire integral. So now let's think about this. The average of something. We said the average was to add a whole bunch of things up and then divide by how many there are. The integral says to add. We are adding a whole bunch of bases times heights or rectangles, which is the f of x dx from a to b. And then we are going to divide by that number of integrals, excuse me, rectangles, which is b minus a. Because the, the difference in the endpoints is going to tell you the total number of rectangles that you would have to divide by. All right, let's go ahead and put that into action. If f is integrable on the closed interval from a to b, then the average value of f on that interval is given by, and this is the equation we just came up with, f of c equals 1 over b minus a, times the integral from a to b of f of x dx. So part a says find the average value of f of x equals x squared on the interval from 0 to 3. And then part b, where does the average value occur? So the first part is literally just using our formula because it says find the average value. So I am looking for f of c. Oops, got my c. And that's going to equal 1 over b minus a, so that's 1 over 3 minus 0, times the integral from 0 to 3 of f of x, which in this case is x squared dx. And now we can go ahead and finish off the um, simplification here. So 1 third, the integral of x squared is going to be, that's going to be 1 third x cubed from 0 to 3. I can multiply the two one-thirds together and get a ninth. And then when I plug in 3, I'm going to get 27. When I plug in 0, I'm going to get 0. So I get one-ninth of 27, which is 3. So f of c is 3. That is the average value. So basically, whatever this, well, not whatever it is, because it's a parabola, from 0 to 3 looks something like that. What it's saying is the average height of that is 3, which is about, well, if I go out to 3, that's 9 way up here. So maybe 6, 3, that's really horribly spaced. Let's try that again. Maybe 6 is there, maybe 3 is there. So it's telling me that this right here is the average height. Now the question is, it wants to know where does that occur. So now I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that C value. Well. That's not that hard to figure out. I just take the original function, x squared, and set it equal to that y value so that I can find the value where this occurs. And taking the square root of both sides, you would get plus or minus the square root of 3 
of course, we are only looking for the C value, which is in our domain, which is between 0 and 3. So we're only looking for the positive square root of 3. So that right there would be the positive square root of 3. And what that says, again, I'll shade this one more time just so we can see. It says that this entire area right here from 0 to 3 is exactly the same as the area of this rectangle at the height of 3. They have exactly the same area. Okay, not terribly difficult to do in the basic concept here. Um, obviously, there can be much more involved with this, and we'll get into one that's um, an AP style question at the end. All right, <clears throat> so second part here, or the next page, I guess you would say. A uh, company introduces a new product, and the profit, I should say in thousands of dollars, not I thousands of dollars, in thousands of dollars, uh, over the first six months is approximated by the formula P equals 5 times root T plus 30. For T equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. <clears throat> okay, so T is our months. So use the model to complete the table and use the entries to calculate the average profit over the first six months. All right, so if we plug in 1 for T, that's going to be 5 times 31. That actually ends up being 155. Okay, if you plug in 2, you're going to get 5 times root 2 plus 30. That's not really useful when it comes to... Um, doing like things with involving profit which is money so we're going to go ahead and convert this into decimals and just because i want to keep following an ap standard here we're going to go three decimals even though usually money would round to probably two decimals so that it would be in cents um but if you plug that in your calculator you get five times root two plus 30 which would be 157.071 i believe if i rounded that correctly if you plug in 3, 5 times root 3 plus 30 is about 158.660. Okay, plugging in 4 actually works out nicely because square root of 4 is a nice number, so it's really 5 times 32, which is 160. Square root of 5 does not work out so nicely. That gives us 161.180. <clears throat> and then 6 is 162.247. And then if I want to find the average, <clears throat> just like you would do a normal average, this is really simple. You just add up the six values and divide by six. So our profit average here is, um, and I went ahead and did this already. If I add up all six values and divide by six, I would get 159.026. Obviously, in terms of money, that would be 159.03. So you're getting cents. That's using the table. Okay, that's using 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Well, what if I wanted to do it using the actual function itself? So we're going to use the function. And notice that our interval is going to go from 0.5 to 6.5. And that's because if we start at 0, um, 0 in this case is at the beginning of a month, nothing would have happened. So we kind of have to go with the middle of the month. We're assuming that the middle of the month is when they calculate their profits. Um, you'd have to be told, told that information, which is why I told you to integrate from 0.5 to 6.5. So we're going to integrate from 0.5 to 6.5, but I am trying to find the average. So we want to do our f of c equals 1 over b minus a, so 6.5 minus 0.5. And then my function was, scroll back up here real quick. 5 root 30 plus, I mean 5 root t plus 30 dt. And then you would plug that in the calculator. I'm not going to bring the calculator out in this case. Um, but that would work out to be 159.010. And you can see that those two things are actually really close. If we use the actual function going from 0.5 to 6.5, or we just take the six independent values that we calculated and plug those in and divide by six, those two values are very, very close together. Not a bad approximation method here if we have to use it. It's actually literally like one cent apart. Okay, so let's move on. 
find the average value. Now we're just doing this in terms of actual functions. Find the average value of f of x equals 2x plus 6x squared over the interval from 1 to 4. Okay, so average value f of c equals 1 over b minus a, 1 over 4 minus 1. Integral 1 to 4 of 2x plus 6x squared dx. Okay, and this is something we can do by hand. Um, you'll pretty much know when you can do it by hand and when you can't do it by hand if you notice that the um, functions that you're given are something where you can take antiderivatives or not. Um, so this one can be done by hand. So this is going to be one third. Let's see what we're going to get here. So the antiderivative is x squared plus 2x cubed from 1 to 4. Okay, I'm going to leave the 1 third factored out, and I'm just going to go ahead and plug in my 4 and my 1. So if I plug in 4, we're going to get 16 plus, ooh, um, 4 cubed is 64 times 2 is 128. going to be some bigger numbers than I was anticipating here, but that's fine. Minus, next one will be easy, that's just 1 plus 2. So we're going to get 1 third of, let's see, 16 plus 128 is 144, minus 3 is 141, which believe it or not is divisible by 3. <clears throat> that's going to be, 3 goes into 14, um, four times with a remainder of two, so three goes into 21 seven times, so 47. That is your average value on the interval from one to four. Okay, let's go ahead and find the average value of cosine of x over the integral from zero to pi. So once again, let's go ahead and just use a different color for sake of it. One over b minus a, integral a to b of cosine of x dx. Okay, antiderivative here is simple. That's just sine of x. We'll evaluate it from 0 to pi. So we're going to get 1 over pi times sine of pi is 0, sine of 0 is 0. So we get 1 over pi times 0, which is just 0. So the average value of cosine of x from 0 to pi is just 0. And if you really think about what the graph of cosine of x looks like, that makes sense. It's just telling you the average height from 0 to pi is 0, which means that your, all your heights from 0 to pi halves plus all your heights from pi halves to pi add up and then divide to be nothing because they all add up to 0. But again, you just kind of have to think about that, and that makes sense with the, uh, with the way the graph of cosine looks. All right. And number five, if f of x is x squared on the interval from 1 to 4, find the value for c in the mean value theorem of integrals. So you just have to know that if you see that, it just means average value. Just do the average value. So let's go with red this time. Why not? So f of c equals 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b, of x squared dx. So we're going to get 1 third of, antiderivative is 1 third x cubed from 1 to 4. So we're going to get 1 ninth, plugging in a 4 is 64, plugging in a 1 is 1. So that is 64 minus 1, which is 63, divided by 9 is 7. Um, and then it does say find the value for C in the mean value theorem for integrals. So now we actually need to find the value of C, which just means take the average value and set it equal to your function. So that means on our interval, because x is going to be the plus or minus square root of 7, the c value is simply the square root of 7 because that's the one on our interval. All right, that is good enough for this video. I am going to come back and we will do one short video. I am only going to do the first 
um, AP problem following this. I'm not going to do the second one. We might save that one for review later.